I have just completed my peak week of marathon training and I am here to show you it's not as scary as you might think and your body can achieve amazing things. So sit tight as I show you my Monday to Sunday workouts finishing with a 22 mile long run. And let's go! You uh, best believe that I'm going to be wearing these in every single video for the foreseeable future. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to episode 11 of the Beginner Build series. It's kind of mad to look back at the last 11 weeks and see just how much I've actually achieved. Now you might remember hearing me talk about my peak week in a video I posted a while back and how that week was going to consist of me running more than 50 miles. Well I've just completed my peak week and it started on a Monday with an easy run. A 9.9 .9 mile easy run to be exact. Which quite frankly I think is a bit bonkers and I genuinely think my body must have hated me for the first couple of miles because this was straight off the back of me running a new 10k PB at the Leicester 10k literally the day before. So yeah, my legs were definitely feeling it. All I want for somebody to see me. Yeah, yeah. Anyone, anyone with two eyes will do just fine cuz found throughout the last 11 weeks of training is my easy runs always end up being a sort of progression run. The first one to two miles are religiously the hardest miles of the entire run and that is because I always do my long run literally the day before but every time by mile three or four something changes within my legs and it's as if they finally wake up and all of that fatigue that I woke up with just disappears and it's like I've got a brand new set of legs to work with. I'm too good, I'm too good for my own good Yeah, yeah, I'll be there, I'll be there in a minute Even though it took an hour for you to even answer I'm losing all my power, but who's keeping score? Now I truly believe that easy runs are the hardest runs to pace. I never know if I'm truly overexerting myself or if I'm holding myself back more than I should be. And there are tons of people on the internet who talk about training to heart rate and to train with a heart rate monitor, but I just don't have a heart rate monitor that I can trust 100% of the time in order to be able to train to a heart rate. Sorry Apple, you can't always be perfect. So a lot of my easy runs throughout this training block have actually been done to a feeling rather than to a pace. And I actually find myself verbally saying the words out loud, easy is a feeling, not a number. Now this does mean that there are some days that I settle in at an 8 minutes 10 per mile pace and I hold it for the entire easy run. But it also means there are days where easy feels like 9 minutes 30 per mile and that is still a push. Spoiler alert, this may have happened on Sunday. Monday's run came out to be 9.91 miles with an average pace of 8 minutes 20 per mile. Time on feet for the run was 1 hour, 22 minutes and 39 seconds. Now the pace fluctuated a little bit but I did run a pretty hilly route and the elevation was constantly changing for the duration of the run. All in all, it's a pretty solid way to start the week. Wednesday was good. Like, Wednesday was really good. Wednesday was quite possibly one of my strongest workouts in the entire training block. Wednesday, we went back to the track for a pyramid interval session. Oh, I want it, let's go. Look around, where's the people at? I want a taste of the good life. Hit me with it right now, in it. Cause when I want it, then I want it. Yeah, I want it, oh, I want it, let's go.
Now bear with me because this is a mammoth of an interval session so I'm going to explain it step by step as clearly as I can. So the session started with a 3.8 mile warm up followed by a 90 second walking rest. Nothing more, nothing less. The planned reps went as follows, 0.1 miles at 5 minutes 30 per mile followed by a 60 second walking rest, 0.25 miles at 5.40 per mile again followed by 60 seconds walking rest, 0.35 miles at 6 minutes per mile followed by 90 seconds walking rest, 0.5 miles at 6.05 per mile with a 90 second walking rest and then 0.6 miles at 6.10 per mile with a 90 second walking rest rest. I then did all of this again in reverse order and oh my god did this session get me feeling good. I'm currently switching into the alpha flies because it's a pretty fast session today. And these are pretty fast shoes. And I won't look back, yeah. I don't care about the bad shit back home. Since the night, baby, I just wanna let it go. Nothing matters when we're way out here. Oh, I, I, oh, I, I, yeah. Baby, I don't have to know your real name. I'm just addicted to the way you take the pain away. Nothing matters when we're way There's just something about running on a track that gives me an exceptionally good runner's high. I don't know if it's because I'm surrounded by other runners or just because of the environment in general, but genuinely it feels so much better than doing any of these sessions on a treadmill. The only downside to doing these workouts on a track is the warm up and the cool downs go on for so long. Like my warm up in this was 3.8 miles, which is like 15 laps of a standard track. And I do actually think that this is the reason why I may have set off slightly too fast in my first rep, which I ran at four minutes 30 per mile rather than five minutes 30 per mile. Other than that little cowboy, all of the other reps were pretty consistent with the target pace. And I'm pretty sure that I hit every single one of them. And I just felt stronger and stronger as the workout progressed. The workout ended with a 1.9 mile cooldown, bringing the total distance, including all of the walking rests, to 10.21 miles. Time on feet was one hour, 25 minutes and 14 seconds. And there was an average pace of eight minutes 20 for the entire workout. Now, if I do some quick maths, my weekly mileage total currently stands at 20.11 miles. Can this week get any better? And I really need to learn how to not go off too fast because that has battered me. Friday's session was a little bit rocky. The session plan was a 1.2 mile warm up followed by two tempo blocks of 3.1 miles at a 6.45 per mile pace and then a 0.6 mile cooldown. In between the two 3.1 mile blocks, there was a three minute walking rest. But when you're in the peaks of a tempo session, those three minutes just disappear. It's genuinely like they don't even happen. And I definitely got taught a lesson when it comes to overshooting your target pace in the first tempo block. Because oh my God, did it come back to haunt me in the second round. As I said, the first 3.1 mile block came in a little bit fast with an average pace of six minutes and 31 seconds per mile. And I genuinely felt like I was in the trenches and did not want to continue with the rest of the session. The notes for this session basically said that I should try and ease into the first tempo block 
and then try and beat my time going into the second block. And I can tell you right now that did not happen. Block two surprisingly actually felt a lot more steady and I actually felt a lot stronger considering just how bad block one had made me feel. My average heart rate in block two was so much lower and so much more consistent than what it was in block one. And I genuinely think this was because I was more focused on trying to complete the workout to a high standard than trying to beat my previous time, which would have just been an idiotic move altogether. Block two came out with an average pace of six minutes, 36 seconds per mile, which is still 10 seconds faster than my target time. But when I tell you I felt much happier with how my body had performed, that pace is absolutely fine with me. In a good way, this session humbled me and was probably the thing I needed to bring me back down to earth after running a new 10k PB at the weekend. So the fact that two shorter blocks at a slower pace felt hard and they had a rest in between was probably the reality check I needed to be brought back down to earth. The total workout came to 8.36 miles with an average pace of 7 minutes and 23 seconds per mile. Time on feet was 1 hour, 1 minute and 49 seconds. And with a quick bit of maths, our weekly total currently stands at 28.48 miles. Now if you're any good at maths and this week is a 50 mile week, Try and work out just how many miles I've got to run on Sunday. Got it? Well, I'm going to tell you anyway. Obnoxiously loud geese. Can't quite believe I'm actually about to say this, but I will see you in 22 miles time. 22 miles. Sunday was a huge moment for me and it was such a big moment that I made the executive decision not to take my GoPro on my run. On Sunday, March 10th, I ran the longest run I will do before the actual marathon, 22.2 miles. And instead of just showing you loads of random GoPro clips, I want to actually walk through how I planned and executed the run because it's not actually as scary as you might think. So starting with the night before, I tried my absolute hard to get as much quality sleep as I could. Now annoyingly I was actually on a work project in London on the Saturday and after two tubes, one train, one bus ride and a car journey home I finally got wrapped up in my bed at about 11 o'clock at night. Not ideal but we worked with it. I slept right through the night until 8 30 Sunday morning like a little baby and got about nine hours of quality time asleep. Now Sunday morning consisted of me topping up all of my fuel stores as well as making sure I had all my running kit laid out, ready to get changed into before my run. For breakfast, I had a jam bagel, and then I also had 550 milliliters of squash with one gram of bulk electrolytes added to it. The idea behind this was to essentially top up my carb stores and make sure I had enough electrolytes on board so I didn't cramp up. About an hour later, nature cooled, and after that I got changed into my running gear. The run itself consisted of a 3.1 mile warm up followed by 16 miles at marathon pace, which for me is 7.20 to 7.35 per mile, and then a 2.5 mile cool down. I settled into a rhythm around the 7.24 per mile mark, and from that point on, we were quite literally golden right until the end. This long run genuinely felt like an amalgamation of the last 11 weeks of training. Everything I've learned about running and form, fueling, strategy, recovery, all of my strengths and all of my weaknesses all felt like they'd kind of fallen into place leading up to this moment. And I can't lie, it was a pretty darn good feeling and probably the pinnacle moment of my entire training block. So my total workout distance came to 22.20 miles. I had an average pace of seven minutes, 47 per mile and my time on feet was two hours, 52 minutes and 56 seconds. Which when you think about it, isn't that far off from how long I'll be running for for the actual marathon. And with that final long run added to the total, it brings my total weekly mileage to 50.68 miles. Total time on feet of six hours and 42 minutes. Not bad going for a lad that just has a dream of running a marathon. I just realized I never filmed an outro for this video.
I'll keep this one short and sweet, but if you enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like as it genuinely means so much more to me than you might initially think. The support I've received throughout my time making these videos has been absolutely immense and has blown my mind beyond points I could have imagined. So if you have contributed in any way to that, I want to say a massive thank you. This was my biggest week before Manchester and now that it's out the way and behind me, most of the hard work is actually done. I've got a deload week coming coming up next week and then after that we're actually into my taper before race day. So please consider subscribing as I would love to have as many people as possible supporting me for when I cross that finish line on the 14th of April. Have a smashing day however you choose to spend it and I will catch you all next Saturday at 6pm. You should know the saying by now, no bad days. Hey,